and uh, the first talk uh, will be done by Mladen Pavicic uh, from Roger Boskovic Institute, Croatia. Can to weigh the direct communication protocol be considered secret? Please. Thank you. I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me here. It's a bit off the other topics and I'll try to be more informative and informal. The quantum cryptography is meant to patch two main problems with bank and internet transfers today. One is the problem of having more and more sophisticated sub-exponential and super polynomial algorithms that are able to decode more and more complicated codes and that means that nowadays we have to use 1024 and 2048 bits already because 256 and 512 bit encoding is already breakable on clusters and that requires more and more resources to officially encode and decode messages and also to transfer bigger and bigger such messages. The other problem which is more serious and problematic is that anyone who now copies messages can hope to decode them within a few years because anyone who snapped messages several years ago can now without any problem decode these messages because these messages were encoded by 256 and 512 bits so it's not a problem to just read secret messages that were sent from point A to point B several years ago. The answer to that is quantum cryptography where copying is probably not possible and where for the simplest protocol BB84 we have unconditionally secure transmission. The system is very simple and it relies on impossibility of copying messages for quantum systems so that's a so-called no cloning theorem so here we have got a possibility to transmit messages from Alice to Bob encoding them with linear polarization or with diagonal polarization depending on whether halfway plates are inserted or not. Both Alice and Bob insert halfway plates randomly in and then later on via classical communication they select those messages that were transmitted with both halfway plates in or both not in. The other half of the messages with the mixed insertion of half a place they simply discard. So that's very simple but it's limited to the mutual confirmation of insertion via classical communication and almost 15 years ago another protocol was proposed which would if secure enable us to directly transmit messages not keys but messages because as opposed to the previous protocol which is probabilistic, this one is deterministic. So we have got two Bell states and we can also use four Bell states but for that we would need nonlinear optics so it's not practical. And the scheme is represented here by introducing halfway plate Alice can switch from one Bell state to another and in that way she puts both photons in one of the two Bell states and actually messages 0 and 1 are Psi minus and Psi plus states. However, as we'll see later on, this cannot be done without checking whether an eavesdropper is in the line and for that we need another setup in which Alice simply measures her photon this way changing also Bob's photons state and then informs Bob about the outcome of the measurement. This protocol can be attacked by the so-called Nguyen attack which is rather simple. Eve, eavesdropper, has got her own source, sends her own photon to Alice. Alice thinks that that's Bob's photon and 
does her encoding. However, Eve reads the messages and encodes Bob's photon, which she kept delayed in the same way in which Alice would like to send to Bob. So it's a perfect copying of all the messages and it is obviously a problem for Alice and Bob. That means that undetectable Eve can copy all the messages in the message mode. Of course, when we look at the control mode, here we have got a possibility to catch Eve, but in the message mode, not. There are other protocols of the same type, protocols with single photons. We have got, similarly to the BB84 protocol, horizontally, vertically and diagonally polarized photons, and in these two papers, the protocol was proposed and in the meantime also implemented. The preparation is simple. It's shown here of the messages. Alice is just changing incoming Bob's states via two operators. She also doesn't even need to know whether the messages were in one or the other basis. All she needs to know is how to change the messages from one kind to another, as shown here. Leaving the messages un intact means message zero, and changing it into the opposite one means message one. As in ping pong protocol, we have got a control mode, but also here, as Luca Marini himself designed, we have got the possibility to have Eve with her own sources reading all the Alice's encoding, encoding delayed Bob's photon and sending him Alice's messages. Again, it's completely undetectable in the message mode. Now, what about the security of all the protocols we have seen. As I mentioned already, the BB84 is unconditionally secure. And what about two-way protocols? Standardly, we defined the security according to the value of the so-called secret fraction. That means the length of the final key over the length of the row key should be non-negative and actually shouldn't be zero either. In the BB84, we have got the mutual information between Alice and Bob, and the mutual information between Alice and Eve defined as given here. The mutual information also defines the secret fraction as well as the ratio of the length of the keys. In two-way protocols, however, we have got mutual information between Alice and Bob being always equal to one. Why? Because as we have seen here, Eve can transmit all the messages Alice wanted to send to Bob faithfully and also read them all. Also here, she can, being undetectable, read all the messages. That means we have always got mutual information between Alice and Bob being equal to one if Eve is not in the line because she is not in the line and if she is in the line because she faithfully transmits all what she read from Alice to Bob. On the other hand, mutual information between Alice and Eve depends on her presence in the line and it's actually twice the disturbance of the messages in the control mode. BB84 has got such a plot of mutual information between Alice and Bob. It goes to zero because it disturbs the messages and the mutual information between Alice and Eve goes to one because in the end Eve can read all the messages. The information is completely destroyed for Alice and Bob because Eve knows all the messages. So we have got the result that the secret fraction R is zero at this point. That means only for 11% of the disturbance and that's rather low. That was reason why 
the messages were considered in the entangled mode. However, with the two-way protocols, we have got this plot, and we see that the secret fraction can never be negative. That means we have got a problem. We cannot establish the security in the standard way. What we can do is to consider privacy amplification. Recently, proofs of security of two-way protocols appeared, even of unconditional security. So there is something problematic with all that. And the reason why the proof went through is that the authors considered only the attacks that include disturbance in the message mode. But one cannot have unconditional security and unconditionally secure protocol if there is an attack which doesn't have disturbance in the message mode. So if we cannot prove the security for a particular attack, then no proof can be considered unconditionally secure. Can we somehow save these protocols? Perhaps we can consider privacy amplification without the disturbance in the message mode itself. And that is something that hasn't been done because the privacy amplification depends on the disturbance in the message mode in the standard approach. So, can two-way protocols be considered secure? As we said, there is no disturbance in the message mode and we have got only disturbance in the control mode. They are not related to each other. So, privacy amplification cannot work when Eve is in the line all the time. That's obvious. So, can it work for some lower disturbance? That's the question. And that would be that. Thank you, thank you very much.